Gamer's Garage. Can't stop the train, baby. Woo! Welcome back to the Losers Bracket, round 16. And we're going to kick it right off with the esports news as always. And the first thing on our list right now is the MLG CEO resigning. This is uh, some pretty huge news, I have to admit. Major League Gaming CEO, well, former CEO now, Matthew Bromberg, has stepped down and has currently been replaced by an interim CEO named Sundance Giovanni. Basically, what happened, they ended up having a difference of opinion about how fast to grow the company. And because of that, Bromberg said, you know, they wanted to go a little slower than I wanted to, and that's just not me. I can't do it. I am stepping down. This this just isn't me. If I was here, we're going to go full throttle, and I can't do it. I have my opinions on this, but, you know, I'm really interested. Jerry here has been holding his opinion back until this show. So, please, Jerry Prohaska, uh, take the floor. On. Take come the on. floor. All right. You sure? I'm, <laughs> I'm right. sure. I, I want your do opinion. this. All right. Look, let's analyze this like professionals. The first interesting thing I find here is that the announcement to the public, Matthew Bromberg wants to grow too quickly, and Sundance De Giovanni wants to grow slower. That's that's what we have. And this raises a very interesting situation, because the one fact in there is that Bromberg will be an advisor to the Oak Investment Partners. That's MLG's primary investor. So it's not like Bromberg's going away. He's not just disappearing into the night and... You know, it's not like this is a little kitty little fight. This is something a lot different. This is almost like Oak Investment Partners saying, we need to keep Bromberg around. And now the question is why? That's almost the million-dollar question. Why do they need to keep Bromberg alive? So I was doing a little digging. I started thinking about this because, you know, it's kind of like role-playing. If I were Oak Investment Partners making these decisions, what would I do? And so I start to think a little bit about what we've seen happen over the last year, uh, what they've been doing. They acquired a lot of companies. Agora Games, I think, Jason, wasn't that the last company they acquired, if I'm right? You know, if I remember correctly, Agora was the uh, last one. And if people listening don't know what Agora is, they are a huge community developer, basically. They did things like for the Call of Duty series and the Guitar Hero series where they made their community sites and actually hosted tournaments and things like that from their sites. In fact, uh, one of the very first Guitar Hero tournaments that I ever played as part of was run by Agora Games. And they did a wonderful job with their tournaments. So when MLG acquired them, I was very uh, concerned about, you know, what that was going to hold. And, and I really haven't heard anything from Agora since then. It's been a very interesting acquisition. I think that that's one of those things that you have to really sort of start to think about when it comes to what do they mean when they said it grew too quickly. So let's talk about the people. On one side, we have Sundance. Here's a gamer. I think his only thing on his resume is that he was the, quote, worldwide creative director at Gotham Broadband. So here's a guy who uh, we're not talking about Stanford or Harvard or anything like that. To be honest, I don't know what has ever really become of Gotham Broadband. I did a quick Google search, was looking around to see what they were, what became, but nothing really big sticks out. So not too thrilled there. On the other hand, you've got, remember this AOL thing? Remember when they brought Ralph Rivera on as, I think, the, uh, guy who's going to be the president of their online experience. He was another AOL flunky, right? This is clearly somebody who has an MBA from NYU, and, you know, he got his undergraduate degree at Columbia College. So you got somebody who's kind of smart. And so I don't know if this is one of those situations where Sundance probably with Sepso came in there saying, look, we really need to do this. And Bromberg, being a business guy, didn't see it that way. And so maybe Oak Investments said, you know what? We're not going to have drama in our company. So we're going to pull Bromberg up to advise us. And we're going to give Sundance the the helm. And I have a feeling that this is Sundance's time to put up or shut up. Now, they put him as the interim CEO. 
that would imply they're going to bring somebody else on. Because clearly, you know, if you've ever met Sundance, he's not exactly the NBA type, not the guy that I would rely on to necessarily lead much of anything when it comes to, you know, big business. But I'm clearly passionate about gaming. That I'll give him. So at the end of the day, you want my opinion. Is this good? I guess good for who? Is it good for the gamer? Well, I don't know. I, I, at the end of the day, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if there are any changes because uh, Sundance is now the interim CEO. I guess it could be equally interesting. Does Oak Investment vet another good CEO to take Bromberg's place? But I don't see Bromberg as being gone. Again, an advisor to Oak Investment partner is something I think that's that's interesting. I did read that uh, Sundance said in an interview if they asked him to be the permanent CEO, he would not turn it down. Who knows? We might see him sticking around. This could be a very interesting change. When I first read this, my very first thought process was, okay, maybe things aren't necessarily going the best. and Everyone's kind of saying, man, you know, maybe we should slow down the growth. Maybe we're doing too much at once. Then the, the businessman – uh, Bromberg was like, you know, I really don't think that's the way. And I think that they just kind of had the two Rams butting heads. And he just said, you know, if everyone else wants to do it their way, I can't do this. I'm out of here. That's when I first read it. But the more you dig into this, I don't know. Sundance says his goal is to focus on profitable growth and a consistent basis and to grow the company at a slower pace. And I thought to myself, you know, at one level, well, no shit, asshole. Like, that is what business does. What I also found interesting is this idea that they're close to being consistently profitable. That means not consistently profitable. So $42.5 million, and let's face facts, they've been around since, what, 2002? Eight years, $42.5 million. You know, I wish I could get some friends at Oak Investment because they're very patient. And at some level, I can't blame them. They can't let the ship fail. They've got a lot of money in this, but at some point, you know, it's put up or shut up. Bromberg, for better or worse, was a you know pretty aggressive guy. If anybody asks me overall, what do I think of this? I think it's good. I think that Oak Investment has their hands full because they've got to make a tough choice. They trust Sundance with the the helm, but Sundance wasn't the guy anybody wanted years ago. So why would they want him now? Because he's like been trained. Well, that wouldn't make sense because the guy who would have trained him would have been their chief executive officer, and he's having a split with his boss. So I'm not sure I, I see where that's going to go. The Gears League right now honestly looks great. We have 26 teams signed up. The rosters are posted in our forums. And let me tell you what, we've got some real heavy hitters that are in this tournament. We've got AIA, which is Enmity's team, VV Enmity, which consists of Enmity, Crimbo, Perilous, and Zodiac, which that's that's a pretty big force to be reckoned with. Uh, we've got old favorites, MBN. We also have less than zero in this tournament. There's some really big players in this. I, I really am excited to see... The matches, a lot of people have said they're going to be capping their matches. We'll be putting them up on our YouTube channel. This is the preseason week right now, so tons of scrims are going on. People are getting used to the league settings. And from what I've seen, people really seem to be enjoying these settings that you've created, Jerry. Well, I'm not one to brag, but, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, they're, they're, I hear the same thing, just play them. And I know a lot of players, oh, some people want the money, too. I mean, $400 does encourage people to bite the bullet and give it a shot. I'm hoping the feedback is positive. If players have good suggestions and they've, they're recording and they're saying, look, this is what we saw in game. Here's the video. Take a look. Maybe this would be a better way to play it. We'll definitely listen to them without question. You know, we want players to have a good experience. But for this first season, we definitely want them to try uh, these particular settings and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it should be an extremely interesting tournament. And I honestly think that a lot of these teams are, you know, here to stay as well. Like they're here for the win, the, the money, also the community. I've seen a lot of them actually in our shout box, on our forums, getting to know our community as well. So that's a plus for us, as well as keeping Gears alive, which is what we, you know, initially sought out to do. You have people like Jay Mergs and Prospect Insane Prison, a lot of friendly faces in the Gears community coming onto our site and, you know, being a part of this tournament which is really cool i'm excited so jason what other tournament news we got what's going on with fifa and then talk about han 
Well, FIFA is in the midst of its first round right now, so we'll be going to brackets very shortly. In fact, by next week's show, we should have some updates there. So far, we've had a couple really good matches, though. And in regards to Han, we are just about coming up to the end of our competition. And uh, we should have a championship match to announce very shortly. What do people need to know about FIFA? What do people need to know about Han? We've got a lot of people in these events. What what do we need to know? Well, at least with Heroes of New Earth, we've got you know the game just coming out officially on the market this week. So I've been telling you guys for the last couple of weeks now to pick up the beta, play it for free, learn the game. If you haven't listened to me yet, unfortunately, you're out of luck now unless you feel like paying the full retail price for the game, which actually is about half the cost of a normal game on the market. So it's not that bad. It's not that hard on the, um, on the wallet. But, you know, it's still going to be a little bit of money. But at the same time, it is a good game. It's polished. Uh, S2 did really put their um, heart and soul into the game. And actually, I believe I just saw that they have announced a dream project they've been working on, which basically any person now can create their own hero for consideration to be put into the game. That's kind of neat. Definitely check out the shoutcasts we have from the tournament. You can still learn quite a bit about the game. It's a really cool game to learn. As for FIFA, um, this tournament that we're doing so I can give you at least a little bit of details on it, we'll be going up until June 11th of this year, which is right when the World Cup is going to be starting. So we've got quite a few updates that will be coming to you in the next couple of weeks. We'll be doing a bracket round that's ending this week, and then three group rounds, and then four championship bracket rounds. I'm really excited to be able to update you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll have a really great event. So first things first, got to give a big shout-out to our own VV Ultra here. He placed 8th in the free-for-all event that just took place on Game Battle, so good job to him. That's pretty awesome. Congratulations, and, Ultra, yes. Yep. Congrats, Ultra. And uh, while and we're then, on the subject of Halo news, uh, we have a brand-new Halo team. Let's talk about them. That we do. It's uh, VVV Active Rush. They have been placing 10th at the last two consistent events. So we met them in Orlando, spoke with their coach, Spike Mouth. Lo and behold, now you have it. They are now a VDV Active Rush, and team consists of Ares, Arcanum, Ice Vein, Mimic, and, like I said, the coach, Spike Mouth. And I've known these dudes for – I've known of them for quite a while, but Spike Mouth himself, you know, we played some Call of Duty together. He's just a totally awesome, down-to-earth guy, and I think they're a great personal fit for VDV. And our community and how we, you know, display ourselves at events. They're really in it to win it, and they're just great down to earth. All of them are all cool guys. Yeah, I'll just say it again. Welcome to the organization. I'm really glad to have Active Rush with us. I want to have a strong presence in Halo, and I want to be with a team that I think gets the bigger picture, and they certainly interviewed very well. Um, Jason, you met him in Orlando. You, you spoke to Spike mm-hmm. a lot, right? Definitely, I did. And, you know, I've got to say... Uh, from my personal opinion, these guys are a perfect fit for our community. They're humble, talented. They're fun to be around. They they have good personalities. Talking a lot to Justin, Spike Mouth, he, uh, he was very personable. He came up and told me when their matches were being played. He, he was like, I really want your opinion. Let us know how we're doing. It was really cool, very uh, interactive conversations. And he's he seems like he really has his heart in the right place, too. He, uh, he gave me a little bit of a, a quote last night when I was talking to him that said, I've seen VV grow at the events that I've been to in the past, and it's amazing to be a part of this organization. Uh, I've seen the huge amounts of success they've obtained, and hopefully, he said, we'll be able to bring even more success to this community. Uh, And he said it would be an honor to do so, which is really cool. He wants to build the relationship that Active Rush has with VV, and he says that he admires everything that we offer and stand for. So I feel like they're a perfect fit. Yeah, I got the same feeling. They really like to be, you know, referred to by first name basis, which I thought was good. Wanting to grow a real relationship. You know, I thought that was good because you don't see that all the time. Absolutely, especially in the Halo community. You know, you have the kids that dodge, the kids that say they'll they'll put out and stuff like that. And lo and behold, nothing shows up on their achievement list or anything. They change rosters within, you know, I don't know, 48 hours. And, you know, that doesn't look too good on us, and I'm pretty sure Active Rush is completely the opposite. Actually, I know they are. I'm, I'm really proud to have them a part of EVV. It's a good, good start. Now, when you're talking about roster changes, I know for a fact that Spike Mount's been playing with Ice Vein and Mimic for quite a long time, too, which it's kind of cool because they don't just go for roster changes after every event. They really do want to work through the issues that they have as a team and grow. 
Well, there you go. We have a ton of uh, expectations now, and hopefully they can live up to them. Again, I just want to say welcome to them. So EA Sports, they're trying something a little bit new in regards to gaming. This is this is kind of baffling. For PC gaming, the PC gaming market for quite a while has included CD keys with games that you could play online. And basically, a CD key means that, hey, this is your copy of the game and you can play it online. Well, EA Sports has said, well, we're going to start doing this with our console games, Tiger Woods 11, things like that, where only the person who buys the copy of the game first will be able to play it online. You're going to have to put in this key to be able to play online. So what this means for the bigger picture is that if you buy this game, play it online, and then sell it used to a store, whoever then buys that copy of the game will not be able to play online unless they rebuy a CD key for an extra fee. You know, this could really affect the competitive market because, you know, some kids might not necessarily want to have to pay twice to be able to play a game online. I think it might be a smart decision from the actual company to be able to make some money, but guys, what are your opinions on this? To be honest, I think that this is bad news for GameStop and bad news for Play and Trade, but it's probably good news for EA because, one, it encourages people to buy a new product, and it probably, I guess, Best Buy is probably good for you too, isn't it, at Best Buy? You know, I'd imagine so, although some Best Buys I've heard have tried dabbling in used games and tried even – there was a couple of Best Buys out in, I believe, California that were trying a test where if a store had a game at a used price, they'd sell the same game at the cost of the used game but new. So I don't think that that ever worked out too well because so – matching prices? Basically, but matching used prices oh, with, with, used new price games. with new game. That's yeah. messed up. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't. I haven't heard anything about that since last year. I don't think that ever actually caught on. I have a feeling they lost too much money doing that. But at the same time, this is a whole new ball game because, frankly, this is going to take a lot of money out of stores like GameStop and Play and Trade's pockets. And it's possibly going to hinder some competitive aspects. Like, imagine if a studio like Epic decided they wanted to do that with Gears of War. It'd be, you know, this is only EA Sports right now, but if this catches on, if studios say, wow, EA is making some money doing this, and this catches on like wildfire, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see what's going to occur, at least in the competitive aspect. Being a GameStop employee for so long now, I mean, I'm not too sure how this would affect us other than the fact that we strive on our used games. That's where we make all of our money. So it'll affect you a lot then. Well, we do, but like how many people are going to come back and return that game knowing the fact that if they do it, they'll have to rebuy it once again. Like they'll have to rebuy this whole CD key. I'm not too sure how successful that'll be because, you know, how many people are going to sit here and trade in. So we're going to lose our money in trades as well. So where are all these used games going to go? They're just going to be sitting there for quite some time because who's going to want to have to rebuy a CD key on top of a used game price? That's an interesting thing to point out, Kelly. Not only could this affect used game prices, but it could also affect the prices of new games because the value could be perceived as less if you buy a game and you know you're not able to get as much from it. it you know, this could affect the entire market. Yeah. Without a doubt. If other studios start copying this. It'll be strange to see if, you know, maybe game prices don't come down. That's at least one hypothesis that I've come up with, but we'll see. Well, I mean, I think the other thing that we should probably consider is what happens with OnLive's release. I think OnLive is going to give them sort of permission to do this kind of thing. And GameStop says that it supports EA's new direction. So, I mean, it may not be bad for... Uh, GameStop, it might be bad for the brick and mortar part of GameStop, but at the end of the day, I don't know how it's all going to change. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something I want to keep an eye on because in some ways I think that this has something to do with the release of OnLive, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't want to uh, say for sure, but I'm speculating that, that in some ways this plays a part uh, in what EA is doing. So Steel Series, Steel Series and Gosu Gamers, they just announced a Heroes of New Earth World Cup, forty thousand dollar prize pool. Yeah, I've got to give Steel Series Chief Marketing Officer Kim Ron a lot of credit because this is no light tournament here with forty thousand dollars. They've got five main regions: Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, North and South America, Asia, Oceania, and mixed. So. All the players in North and South America 
are going to be in the same qualifying bracket, which is going to be very interesting. You know, this is like a huge opportunity for the best of North America to participate in what really is a very important, in my humble opinion, esports competition. $40,000 is no joke. I think it's major news. I want to congratulate Steel Series for arranging this entire opportunity. And I think Heroes and North players stand to, uh, you know, be in a, in a really interesting competition. I totally agree. I think that this cements the fact that Heroes of New Earth as a competitive title isn't going anywhere for a while, at least, because this is not the first major tournament like this to have been announced recently. So there's huge prize pools out there for this. This game's really taken off, and it's just come out this week. Triforce actually asked to be on the show because he wanted to set the record straight and dispel some rumors, he told me. He said... He wanted to spell why and how he left the final audition for The Ultimate Gamer 2, um, why he auditioned to begin with. Um, he wanted to talk about his power glove, whether or not he's embarrassed to wear it. He wanted to talk about Justin Wong and Sanford Kelly were the only people that Empire Acadia marketed. And he wanted to talk about if he was a pro gamer. And, I, and, and to be honest, I wouldn't mind having Triforce on here because I'm just cruel like that. But at the end of the day, I didn't really think it was that relevant. The Ultimate Gamer 2 auditions are over. That's old news. The Power Glove, I mean, hopefully he's not embarrassed. He's the one wearing it. And, you know, as far as, like, who they market, that's just, like, crap. And then whether or not he's a pro gamer. Who? who does anybody here think Triforce is a pro gamer? Jerry, Jerry, he has 30 world records in the Guinness Book. Come on. What is that? How does it make him a professional gamer where one makes their living on gaming? What makes – how – does anybody think he's a pro gamer? Do not question the empire of Arcadia. No. Yeah. Okay. I, I question – yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So, no. yeah. So, anyway, <clears throat> to make a long story short, Triforce is always welcome on the show if he's got something relevant. If it's relevant to esports, people care about it. But, you know, whether or not he's embarrassed about his power glove – yeah, we talked about him last week, but to be honest, nobody cares. But what I do care about is setting the record straight. So uh, we were contacted by our very own VV main event, who I was very cruel to last week. And um, most of you know Real Law, of course. Want us here to talk about what really happened at the WCG Fight Club, because it appears we had some bad intel. So Juan, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, no problem. So I want to give you the floor, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut because uh, – we picked on you in certain ways that were not fair. So what did happen at the WCG Fight Club? What was the truth of the matter? Well, you being quiet it would be probably the first time in the 16 episodes that that actually happened. So oh! I there. Um, actually, what happened was uh, it was said that I um, I came into some bogus 79th place or some shit like that. The truth of the matter is, is that I didn't even play a single match there. Was I in the building? Yes. Did I play casuals? Yes. What happened was apparently... Since they had DOA4 there, and they had hosts there, like Swoozy was there, and fucking other, like, virtual fighter groupies and people, you know, for a game that is six years old that nobody gives a shit about. And what happened was is that the people that were actually directing the, the Tekken 6 tournament were doing it by mouth and calling people by names. Now, what happened there was half of the fucking field got DQ'd. What happens when half a field gets DQ'd? Well, I'll tell you. They did random seedings for this tournament. Random seedings. Because God knows, nobody knows who the best players are in Tekken. They, all they had to do was ask somebody. But they did random seedings. Now, the person with the random higher seeding stayed in, in uh, winners. Now, the person with the lower seeding automatically went to losers. Even though both players got DQ'd, the random higher place player got put into winners. Now, when I was told that me sitting there for six hours, six to seven hours having to constantly go up and ask when my match is and being told that it's in being a little while and then go up and have to tell me that I got disqualified because I didn't go, I wasn't ready to play after sitting there all day. Well, I had a little chat with the director of the event. I don't know its name. It was some white guy. And uh, they all kind of looked the same to me. Uh, and Racist. I told him, like, this is, this is kind of, you know, this is bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit here and be put into losers when I've been sitting here all day. You're, you're trying to tell me my time is invaluable. Long story short, I said, you know what? This, this tournament, whatever, I don't give a shit. Just DQ me for the, for the, in, the, in losers. For, I'll forfeit my match, whatever. Okay? And that's what happened at WCG. Now, the place was awesome. It was awesome. It looked good. But it was easily, now, as, I'll tell you this, easily the worst experience I've ever had at a tournament. And I've been to 
many tournaments, underground, commercial, whatever. I've been to every single one. It was the worst experience ever. The prizes were dope, and I'm glad that my boys got a couple of them. But as far as an overall experience, terrible, terrible. So that's just the record. I didn't even play a single match, so I couldn't have gotten smoked. No way. So that record has now been cleared, and uh, Juan rightfully should t- But you know what? I'm surprised that the World Cyber Games ran an event this far off. I mean, they've had, to be honest, they did, sometimes it's the staff. If they don't have the right staff, did you know any of the staff running the tournament, or how many referees no. did they have? Or No, no referees. They had two guys with fucking a sheet of paper with our government names on it, with our regular names and our, our tags on there, and they had no idea who any of the players were. Uh, strike that they had they had an idea who the players were from doa that were playing tekken randomly you know the guys on the mic hyping it up and if you want to talk about people hyping it up it sounded like a fucking rap video then if anyone saw the live stream there it was ridiculous i've never seen such hype for two games that a nobody gave a shit about when it was actually new b is six years old both of them i think and weren't even really good games even when they were on the, the pro circuit of wcg and to have there and have Tekken, a game that just came out in October, be not the, pardon the pun, but not the main event there was comical, ridiculous. So, I mean, I heard a lot of things about, you know, MLG, you know, fucking things up, but I had a cool last time at MLG. WCG so far, like, I was thinking about not even going back to tell you the truth, but I will just because, fuck it, it's WCG, so. So do you think that maybe, and this is just me asking this out in the blue, and Kelly, you might know too, do you think too many people like Swoozy too much? Dude, oh, dude. <laughs> you, I, you know what, Kelly, I'm not sure if you guys are friends because you guys were on that show together or whatever. It was like he was Carson Daly, and I was in a really bad episode of, like, Total Request. It was ridiculous. I was like, I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh that's his job though you gotta you gotta number one that's his job personality but when he's off the mic he's like he was walking around mlg i don't know if you talked to him or not but he is a really fantastic person and really fun and just outgoing and just very charismatic so i mean that's the, him on the mic but then there's like a whole nother tone to his voice when he's off the mic and it's nah, just so I, much better I'm sure he's a really cool guy. I don't mean to Absolutely. You know, say anything uh, bad about it, but the, the point, I think the part that pissed me off was that the DOA part of it was on the stream and the virtual right. fighter part of it was on the stream when two games that are obviously not even <laughs> relevant, you know what I mean? Not even relevant in this point. That's the part that got me, basically. I mean, I'm sure he did a good job hyping it up. I really wanted to dance there. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's, like I said, that's his job and him and Bruce. Um, Bruce is the other, I think he commentated Fight Night. I'm pretty sure he does that as well, but he does all the other WCG events. You know, he did, what was it, the Invitational Jerry and I went to, had Gears of War, and he didn't, he knew nothing about the game, yet he stood there on stage, and you wouldn't have guessed it. He's like, I've never played this game in my life. And he had like five minutes to, you know, learn a few of the weapons. He came up to me, asked me a few of the, you know, points and stuff like that. That's their job, and, you know, they do a fantastic job at it, but the second you talk to him off mic, go to a bar with the dudes, Totally different, totally great experience, and you know you learned to love him. He's a good guy. I'm. Uh, I gotta say though, I am still a little upset that you know he lives right here in town with me, and he challenged me to DJ Hero, and I still have yet to play him. So Swoozy, if you're hearing this, my man, uh, when are we throwing down? Because uh, I'm ready to take you out. Just saying. That's a challenge right there. I like that. Yeah, pretty sure you'll win. I got my money on Jason. Sorry, Susie. I love you. <laughs> I love Jason a little bit more. <laughs> so I, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad that I got to come on here and kind of set the record straight about that one thing. There is, there is something else that that needed to to be. Uh, you guys uh, allow me to just the record be straight on. He's gonna beat um, me up, isn't he? You're not gonna no, hit me, are you? No, listen. The I uh, the thing about last week. And uh, we discussed this earlier, and it, you know it was cool. I, we both have thick skin. I'm an arcade player, you know. And you know everything except for the fuck you part. I was cool with, but the, I'll see you on that one. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. There's two messages. I got fucking aims and PMs about this shit from last week, and let me let me address two things in particular. All right, the comment I wrote on on Facebook was really not about me being disrespected, like I didn't have money. 
Um, but it was felt like it was like because I thought it was an over like a, a long shot. But that's neither here nor there. So I mean, the point people were asking me was like, oh, you really don't have money. Everybody that knows me, and it was point, brought up last week. I'm 30 years old. I got I got money. I have money. I've traveled across the country to every tournament you could think of on my own dime for five years. Shit, every week I drove. I took an hour and a half drive to New Jersey on my own gas. And this was when gas was going up. And I drove a Grand Cherokee, a 2000 at that time. So I've been everywhere. So people know I have money. But I wasn't mad about it. I mean, I, I think uh, gamers should not have such a thin skin when it comes to it. And you know, a lot of the console players, I don't have a lot of fighter friends. I mean, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, people that play shooters or fucking games like that or me- Melee or anything like that. When it was asked if I cared about what happened, I said, no, I, there's, you know, people are going to say whatever they say. I was more uh, mad that people um, wrote me stupid messages that I had to answer more than anything else. So, I mean, that part was cool. But, uh, I mean, the whole thing was was not that I didn't have money to go. And to prove that I had money to go, I actually did go to Midwest Championship last weekend. You guys don't know that, and I didn't tell you offline. But I did go. After I said I wasn't going to go, it was Mother's Day's weekend, my girlfriend would have been mad. She said, you know what, you go. And I did. Got top eight, went there, fucked some people up, and just to set the record straight because I felt like I had some things to kind of prove and do whatever. So I went to a major, got my top eight, got seventh, didn't really feel too good about the seventh, but I said, you know what, starts going from here. And uh, the second thing, I got a message because uh, somebody, some jerk off was like, oh, how can I leave my two boys behind, you know, and, and come to VVV by myself and not bring anybody with me? First of all, um, I didn't realize I was the Tekken fucking William Wallace and I was rounding up the troops <laughs> to go, you know what I mean, to go fight for freedom or some shit. I came down here as an adult on my own accord. I spoke with these two guys. And for someone to tell me that I left anybody, which is funny because I play against them every two, you know, twice a week at least. We're at the dungeon in the Bronx playing, you know, and we haven't in the last couple of weeks because we've had so many events to go to. To set the record straight. We still team together, all three of us. The best three-man team in America is still teams. So all you fanboys, all you guys are thinking that you guys are going to get some money in the team tournaments, it's not going to happen. We're still here. We're still busting everybody's ass. And to prove that, me and GM went, and we had a third player who we normally don't team with, and we still fucking won in the Midwest, the three-on-three championship. Get that out of your mind. Record is set straight here. Me, Fab, GM, we'll team regardless of what organizations we are in because that's how we roll. Ah, damn. Just so everybody knows, you know, from my perspective, Tekken 6 is something I'm learning. And, yeah, for anybody who is sending Juan messages, uh, send them to me. I'll fucking tell you how shit goes down. I mean, I got no problem telling you that if I had a problem with anything he was doing, he would know way before you would. So, truth be told, I'm still, still the best low player in the country, bar none. We can definitely say you're confident. And the fire is still there. I heard last week that maybe the fire is gone or some nonsense like that. And definitely, the fire is definitely not gone. Well, that's good because I was sick of seeing ashes. It was messing my lungs up and everything like that. So now that the fire is restarted, wore my stop, hands by it too. Stop smoking those fatties and then uh, you won't have to see all those ashes there. Cheech. I don't. <laughs> Cheech. You just carbon dated yourself by saying Cheech. You realize that, don't you? <laughs> he did that earlier when he said fisticuffs. Fisticuffs, <laughs> yes. Well, you guys mentioned I was 30, so I might be one of the oldest players. You know what? And, and you know, just a little quick gripe about that. If 30 year old guys didn't write things on their Facebook, then uh, then 40 year old guys wouldn't have nothing to rant about the very next week. So it's all good. Oh. It is all good. Which, you know what? <laughs> Woo! I'm done. I know, right? I'm fucking <laughs> done, skis. You know what? Let me tell you something right now, being a 40 year old guy. <laughs> Let me tell you about this right now. First of all, at least I never have to be young again. And yeah. when you're 40, you'll understand what that means. Trust me. So <laughs> that's done out of the way. I'm now, you know, an adult. I have my own life. All is good. But I'll take the hit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't change. You know what? At least you get to pay the, you know, the discount of price when you go see a Not movie. Yeah, I'm waiting though. As soon as that shit starts, I want it to kick in. Let me tell you that right now. If I could retire today, I'd be done. Oh, nice you know what else? Stuff. I got, I got another message. If people were like, "Oh, you guys are like, uh, you and Jerry on some old uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Vince McMahon shit," and you're like, "Cool." Oh my god, you just one. keep dating yourself. Did we just get Come like on, WWF man. references in here? It was the Attitude Era. The, the Attitude Era. Shit. You know what? Speaking of attitude. I want to tell you about attitude. You want to know about attitude? I'll tell you about attitude. There was, and I kid you not, a StarCraft II application. 
I got to tell you guys about the StarCraft application. Kick back, relax for a second, because I'm just going to tell you what the fuck not to do when you come talk to me, all right? There's this kid, Kurt, I think he's NRG, Never Expo, Daigle, Daggle, Diggle, whatever the heck his name is. I don't really care. But he writes up this application, and he's like, hey, I think I did something wrong. Nobody commented. And I'm like, oh, you know, we're busy. We'll probably get to it. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, have you read it yet? First of all, I'm fucking busy. I am fucking busy. What the fuck do you think you're doing? We got it. We've been doing this for a while. Leave me the fuck alone. Go away. So he buys it after the first day. He leaves it alone. This happened like two days ago because he posted on the 9th. Now, mind you, it's not a big deal. It's Mother's Day. I took my mommy and daddy out to fucking lunch. We went to a Brazilian steakhouse. And you know what? When I got back, I read his fucking application. Okay? I can read. This is my site. I've run it for three years. I know what I'm doing. So I read this. Now Monday starts. And he sends me one of these little fucking wormy aims that says, you know, We've had a lot of offers from other organizations, and what I'm worried about is if you don't say yes, that these other organizations are going to then be too late, and we're going to be, you know, kind of in a bind. And I think to myself, who the fuck are you talking to? Like, why would I give a shit about your problem, about this other? Are you stupid? I mean, like, seriously, are you fucking stupid? To give this asshole credit. The fucking Lord Jareth discusses eight things not to do unsponsored. That article hadn't come out yet. But if anybody knows this prick who plays StarCraft 2 and put in his application, I want you to direct him to that article above the shout box. And I want you to show him one of the points, one of the eight points that's very important when you're approaching somebody. And that is not to tell someone that you have numerous other offers, but you wanted to give this one a chance. Let me see. What what is this? Here it is. Don't ever try that tactic with me. I will tell you to go represent one of those other sponsors because I only want teams that aggressively want to represent the VV brand. VV Gaming is the most accomplished console gaming organization in the world. Either you want to have the ability to represent such an accomplished organization or you don't. Looks like this brings us to the end of yet another episode of the Losers Bracket. I would like to thank Real Law, the UV main event, for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Juan. Fuck yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Fuck yeah. Speaking of fuck yeah, what's awesome? We get $5 off our devastation registration by using the discount code VVVGAMING2010. So when you register for devastation this year, if you're going to be there, Phoenix, Arizona, if you are, I will see you there. Use the discount code VVVGAMING2010, and you will get some money off your registration. Thank you to Jedi Rob of Devastation for giving us that discount code. Hey, Jerry, should I ask for the ticket now, or should you rip me right now? Which one should come first? Uh, checks in the mail, Juan. Check your mail. All right. And thank you. Of checks in the mail, I want to thank the Gamers Garage and Crash for hosting the show and doing everything that they do. <laughs> I want to thank the VV sponsors, Steel Series Control Freak, Music Skins, and Custom Inc. And I also want to thank the VV community. You know what? And the fan base has expanded, so I almost feel like we should just thank all of our listeners, not just those in the VV community. Although, if you are listening and you want to be in the greatest community in esports, in the most accomplished console organization in the world, then I highly recommend that this is the place you'd be. So be sure to stop over at thegamersgarage.com where you can find out all the ways to follow us. You know the routine, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, and you can listen to other great podcasts at The Gamers Garage. I highly recommend you listen to the most recent one. Also, you can leave us feedback by calling our voicemail at 206-350-7352. I want to say thank you to my co-hosts. Thank you, Juan. And thanks to all the listeners. We'll catch you next week. Bye, everyone.